Okay, so we're going to take this image that we have converted to CMYK, and we're going to convert it into its dots, because right now we can isolate a channel. So I'll isolate, uh, I'll do it in order, CMYK, cyan, magenta, yellow, black. So I'm going to do cyan first, turn off all the others. And though you can see very clearly the cyan is cyan when it's turned on with magenta, when I isolate it, it just becomes grayscale. That's because the computer is treating this like a light bulb still, or but you can think of it like ink wash. So where there's black, the cyan is turned on all the way. Where there is white, the cyan isn't there at all, right? Because this is the reverse of light. And where it's gray, the cyan is turned on at like 50%, 70%, 22%. The problem is cyan ink is only ever one color. We're not thinning it with water or doing ink wash. So what we have to do is then convert this to grayscale mode. We have to discard all the color information. Actually, what I need to do first, I need to actually delete every other channel. So it's a little labor. It's technical, but it's got a lot of steps. That's why it's fun to automate it. So I'm going to erase the magenta, drag it down to the trash, get rid of the yellow, get rid of the black. Okay, now I just have the cyan. Now I convert it under mode to grayscale. And now I convert it under mode to what is called... Let's see, where is it? Bitmap at the very top. Remember, bitmap is an old name for raster. But what bitmap really means, because a bit is one piece of digital memory, means it's either a one or a zero. In visual terms, that means it's either black or white. So this is going to change it to, to only black and white. And I can choose the method. Do I want diffusion dither like this? Or do I want halftone? And I like halftone. So I'm going to do a halftone screen. Next, I'm going to choose the frequency. The frequency is how big should the dots be? I want them to be pretty big so that you can see them. So I'm going to do 30. There's only going to be 30 dots. So basically, a factor of 10 from what our pixel resolution is. Not 300 per inch, but only 30 per inch. And then because it's cyan, what angle do I want to use? I want to use 15 degrees. And then what shape do I want? Do I want to print it with circles, as is traditional, or do I want to use something else, like diamonds or stars? I'm going to use rounds, circles, right? Then I say, OK. This only works in bitmap mode, and then I zoom in. And lo and behold, with just solid black shapes, which will be filled in with, when it prints, with uh, cyan ink, I get the film work for that cyan. I have to do that then for every other color. So this is what I've done to be really, really nice. I've gone and automated the whole process for you. And you can download it for your own computer here and at home. And it's in our Dropbox file. It's this. It's called Actions for Digital Lab 205. Download that whole folder. Now, this only works in Photoshop because Photoshop is a, is a professional program for making things pre-press. Pre and there are other proprietary software is for it too, but you can do it all with Photoshop. So now instead, I'm going to, instead of doing that for each one like that, I'm going to go back in my history to when I opened this, still RGB mode. And then I'm going to go to window actions. These are programs that you can write within Photoshop. And then I'm going to go to my downloads where I just downloaded from Dropbox. I'm going to unzip the folder, Actions for Digital Lab, and then I'm going to load those actions. I'm going to say Load Actions. I'm going to go to my downloads, go to that folder, and select all of these by holding down Shift. Okay, now you'll see I've made you one that says Carl Color Separations Action. You can open that up, 
and here's the one just for cyan. So if I select that one, ah, if I select that one and hit play, I accidentally set it so it asks permission for each thing. I don't want that. <laughs> ah. There we go. Toggle them off. Okay. So I'll talk more about actions later, but if I just run this quickly, there it is. Voila, all in one step. It isolates the cyan and it copies it onto a new layer. So what if I do all of them? I can do CMYK full run, press play. No, it goes pretty fast. Then it will give me all four as individual layers. It will give me the black, give me yellow, give me magenta, give me uh, cyan. And when we look up close, I intentionally make them offset from each other so that you have to hand register them. So that you can control how clean they are or how vintage they are right because now what's fun is I can take all of these and I can put them into my poster file and I can play with some of those custom effects right I can put it behind clean line art but this is how on pretty bad color printing right because I made the dots really big so you could see this would be how it would be reproduced professionally all right, that's it.